we will be hearing from Dr. Phil Yang from cardiology. Dr. Yang will be talking about um, the relationship of long COVID as well in, in terms of cardiovascular manifestations, in terms of clinical um, tips and pearls and, and management. My name is Philip Yang. I'm professor of medicine and cardiovascular medicine at Stanford. And we're going to talk about unraveling long COVID advances in clinical practice in cardiovascular medicine. So the outline will be the following, origin of COVID-19, uh, secondly, cardiovascular manifestation, third, cardiac injury, and all this will allow us to better understand fourth, the long COVID. So we all know that COVID-19 started in Wuhan in China, population 11 million. This is the, the animal market that we think it originated from. And we know that on December 8th, 2019, first case was reported. Uh, this was followed by traveling by a large number of people during the spring festival in early January. But as of January 23rd, shelter in place and lockdown was, were instituted. And as far as February 2nd, two new and 16 field uh, hospital were launched uh, in Wuhan, as you can see in the pictures above. Of course, we know that this is a once in a lifetime pandemic. Uh, stock market crashed, stock supermarket was completely emptied, uh, and city streets were abandoned. So, the basics of SARS CoV 2 are the following. First, you got to understand the general structure of this virus spike protein, envelope protein, the RNA, uh, nuclear protein, and membrane gly glycoprotein. So, this is an envelope positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. The genome, se genome sequence suggests a bad derived source, and it was 96% identical in nucleotide sequence to SARS-CoV, the cause of SARS in 2003. And this would bind to the ACE2 receptor, mostly predominantly seen in lung epithelial cells, but also in the cardiovascular and the GI system. The, cause of co the causes of COVID-19 associated death is mostly respiratory failure, but followed by cardiac complication. Patients with underlying cardiovascular diseases are at higher risk of contracting COVID-19 and had a worse prognosis. As you can see, the comorbidity of hypertension and coronary artery diseases um, uh, led, led to uh, more uh, complication from COVID-19, and case fatality rates for comorbidity was significantly higher in those uh, obviously in here with hypertension and cardiovascular diseases. The cardiovascular co, um, uh, sorry, comor comorbidities uh, increase the risk for contracting COVID-19 and pretend worse outcome. So the cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases led to high burden of underlying cardiovascular disease in patients with COVID-19. And similarly, in those who were critically ill uh, with COVID-19. And cardiac injury were due to probably these four following mechanisms. One is ACE2-mediated direct damage. Second is hypoxia-induced myocardial injury. Third is cardiac microvascular damage. And fourth is systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And you can see the histological findings that were all consistent with these potential underlying mechanism that led to cardiac injury. So in summary, the acute COVID-19 cardiac complications uh, were the following. Patients with underlying cardiovascular disease had poor overall prognosis, and potential cardiovascular complications include myocardial injury and heart failure due, due to direct myocardial insult, myocarditis, myocardial infarction, and stress cardiomyopathy. In addition, pulmonary hypertension and RV dysfunction were seen, 
and also possible arrhythmia and cardiac arrest were also noted. So what is long COVID? Long COVID is a post-COVID condition which persists after week four following the viral infection, acute increase in viral load, and subsequent recovery. But even after the recovery phase, these long COVID patients continue to have these constellation of symptoms even as far as six months and beyond. Those include fatigue, decline in quality of life, muscular weakness, joint pain, dyspnea, cough, anxiety, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And in, in cardiovascular symptom, uh, patients, they were often found with palpitation, chest pain, and issues related to thromboembolic phenomena. So the long COVID and cardiovascular manifestations were seen in the following. First of all, they were predominantly in female, twice as many as male. Some of the predisposition, predisposing symptoms were that they were, they had five or more symptoms in acute phase, leading to high likelihood of developing long COVID. In terms of predictors, they were just diarrhea, anosmia, dyspnea, pleurisy, skin sensitivity, and blood type A. Risk factors are obesity and increased body mass index. And in terms of cardiovascular symptoms, about 17% were chest pain, 20% experienced palpitation, and 30% dyspnea on exertion. Uh, in terms of mechanism, even after the virus was cleared, there was high neutralized antibody titer. Immune system could continue to be overactive in order to induce the symptoms. And autoimmune responsive fragments of viral genes may appear to have persisted. And there's also lingering autonomic dysfunction. In terms of assessing the lung COVID cardiovascular diagnosis, we look for some of the key clinical, serological, and imaging features of natural history beyond the acute viral infection phase. Pathologies were usually related to myocarditis and pericarditis during acute phase, which may then lead to myocardial injury, heart failure, ventricular and atrial arrhythmia, and even sudden cardiac death. Sequela were seen by coronary artery aneurysm, aortic aneurysm, atherosclerosis, venous and arterial thrombosis, and pulmonary embolism. Workup consisted of the following. In order to screen the patients initially, pulmonary function tests and chest X-ray are performed. Subsequently, Echocardiography would be performed to look for right ventricular dysfunction, left ventricular dysfunction, diastolic dysfunction, and pericardial effusion. The Zaya patches were done to assess for ventricular and atrial arrhythmia, and cardiac MRI assessed parametric tissue imaging, looking for T1 and T2 characteristics, and for myocarditis and pericarditis. CT was done to assess coronary aneurysm and pulmonary embolism. And sleep study is usually done to assess hypertension and atrial arrhythmia secondary to sleep apnea. In terms of prognosis, to what extent this is re reversible and this could be treated is largely not known. And this will take us to the mechanism of cardiovascular long COVID. And this is multifactorial. It's a fairly long list, which consists of immune mechanism due to antibody generation, infection due to direct effects of the virus, iatrogenic due to complication of critical illness, psychiatric due to multiple psychosocial factors, post-intensive care syndromes, post-traumatic stress, and oxidative stress. From cardiovascular standpoint, 
clearly there's um, evidence of cardiac deconditioning, heart failure involving pro-inflammatory cytokines with interleukin-1,6 and tumor necrosis factors, inflammation, uh, clearly inflammatory activity continued to increase after COVID and these long COVID patients. Redox imbalance may also link COVID-19 and chronic fatigue syndrome. There is also systemic and neurologic inflammation and also oxidative phosphorylation with altered cardiac respiratory function due to shift in mitochondrial energy for ATP synthesis was seen. Uh, in terms of metabolism, there's increased glycolysis and downregulation of oxidative phosphorylation. And in terms of oxidative stress, myocardial disorders may also lead to significant autonomic dysfunction. How do we treat, car treat cardiovascular lung COVID syndrome? Uh, in terms of hemodynamics, volume expanders, and oral vasoactive, fluids, electrolytes, compression garments, and various exercise techniques for orthostatic intolerance. In terms of supplement, omega-3 fatty acids and dietary supplementation, L-arginine for production of nitric oxide, and antioxidants such as zinc were reported to be effective, but there's no direct clinical trial to demonstrate uh, benefit. In terms of vaccination, over half of the people demonstrate overall improvement, but less than 20% also reported overall deterioration. In terms of psychoactive therapy, cognitive behavior therapy, as well as antidepressants such as tricyclics were effective in some patients. And in terms of exercise, I feel that this is probably the most effective treatment for cardiovascular symptoms of long COVID syndrome. But of course, the patient has to be very motivated as it does involve a lot of hard um, effort and work on the patient's part. So in conclusion, three uh, major findings uh, could be reported. First, lung COVID symptoms may be explained by pro-inflammatory state, by oxidative stress and autonomic uh, dysfunction. Cardiopulmonary testing for unexplained dyspnea in lung COVID patients with chronic fatigue syndrome uh, symptoms demonstrated abnormal pattern of oxygen uptake. And finally, circulatory impairment, abnormal ventilatory pattern, and chronic fatigue syndrome may be common in long COVID patients who do not have overt cardiovascular or pulmonary dysfunction.